The Jaguar XK8 was a real game changer for the Coventry car mark. It was introduced at the Geneva Motor Show in March 1996, 35 years after the E-Type premiered at that same venue. It steadily evolved in its 10-year lifespan and was a real commercial success for the car mark, selling over 90,000 units in that time. So here's our definitive guide to what it's like to buy a Jaguar XK8 or XKR. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. In terms of bodywork, the XK8 is actually pretty decent. Um, the thing to really look for initially is this plastic nose cone here. It can get peppered with stone chips over time, of course, and it's not unknown for specialist dealers to respray this. So check for things like paint match between the nose cone and the bonnet. The headlights are also known to cloud up and uh, get a bit of condensation. In terms of rust, uh, the sort of real telltale points are things like round the wheel arches, front and back. You can check the side seals here and actually there's a piece where the rear wing meets the rear bumper and that can corrode. The real problem area for an XK8 is uh, just under the front bulkhead here. The floor pan seals are known to corrode. Basically it rots from the bulkhead. The good news is those floor pan panels are available for around £9,500 per side and are easily replaced. The rear of the car was facelifted over time. The 2001 model year cars had these chrome beading around the tail lights and for the first time an exterior boot release and check that that electric mechanism actually does work to release it. There is an interior release as well. Uh, the other thing to watch for on the convertible models is of course the operation of the electric hood. If they're not used often enough, the hydraulic fluid that operates the rams can congeal over time and then it just stops working altogether. So if you're buying a convertible, check the condition of the hood, the rear glass and the heating element within it. And if you do buy a convertible, make sure you exercise that electric roof often because it will seize up and it will stop working. The XK8 from launch started its life as a 4-litre, normally aspirated V8 engine, co-developed by Cosworth and built at Ford's Bridge End plant. The normally aspirated engine had 290 brake horsepower and was mated to a 5-speed automatic gearbox. This is the latest supercharged model which was introduced in 1998 featuring 370 horsepower and initially mated to a 5-speed Mercedes automatic gearbox. The engine itself is actually pretty robust but there are a couple of fragile areas. The notorious one for the really early cars is the Nicosil bore lining that a lot of manufacturers experimented with in the late 90s. Unfortunately it was known to uh, wear away due to high sulphur content in unleaded fuel and that led to a loss of compression, ultimately a ruined engine. Most engines were replaced under warranty so if you see signs in the service history of a replacement engine, it's no need to be alarmed. And you'll be able to tell a replacement engine for a green tag at the back of the right hand cylinder bank. From about August 2000, the V8 engine did feature conventional bore liners by then and therefore very little to worry about. The other fragile area is the timing chain tensioners. The early models had plastic tensioners and they were known to break up. And of course, if your cam chains skip a tooth, you can again cause some damage. Likewise, the water pump, those early models had just plastic impellers that were known to break up. And of course, if it's not circulating the coolant around the engine, you're going to lead to an overheating engine. Fortunately, the later cars from 2003 onwards had the upgraded 4.2 V8 engine with metal timing chain tensioners and a metal impellers for the water pump. And they can all be retrofit upgraded to those earlier cars. And it's well worth the upgrade if it hasn't been done already. Other than that, it's just about keeping on top of the maintenance, using good quality oil. And occasionally you might get some electrical gremlins like coil packs and other sensor issues. And even that's often born out of being having a low battery or something like that. The gearboxes themselves, say five speed speed automatic gearboxes on the early cars up to 2003 and then a six speed ZF for all models from 2003 onwards. Technically all sealed for life for transmission fluid but don't believe a word of it. The advice is really to get that fluid changed every 30 to 50,000 miles but it's not an easy job. There's no level tubes or drain tubes or anything like that. So it really is a specialist job but well worth doing if you want that gearbox to perform as well as it should. The Jaguar XK8 suspension was really well developed. It's double wishbone suspension all round and it delivers taut handling and yet still a traditional supple Jaguar ride. With such a heavy, powerful car, worn suspension bushes is a, a very common problem. Look out for things like worn wishbone bushes, subframe mounts, steering rack bushes, damper mounts, anti-roll bar drop links. And you can really tell all of that from just a simple test drive. 
listen for any clonks or rattles or any wandering, particularly under braking. If it's sort of squirming a bit, either from the steering or even the back end, that's almost certainly going to be some suspension geometry issues. Again, the parts are readily available, so it's really simple stuff to keep on top of. Um, an optional extra on XK8 was what's called CATS adaptive damping. You'll tell if the car's got it because you'll see wires coming out of the top strut mounts at the front there. And basically what it was, it was speed variable damping to sort of firm up the ride at high speeds. It's actually a pretty good option and it does work really well. Disc brakes all round on an XK8, but it was one of the weaker areas, I have to say. And you'll really feel the sort of lack of braking performance, particularly on the supercharged models. The good news is that there was a Brembo upgraded pack available from the dealers, and that's a well worth option to look out for. You can, again, retrofit upgrades from either Brembo or other similar brake manufacturers. I'd recommend a brake upgrade if, you, if your budget stretches to that. The interiors of an XK8 are pretty hard wearing on the whole. Distinctive Spitfire wing fascia, generally acres of burr walnut veneer. XKR models came with sometimes the bird's eye maple. Later, post 2003 cars were available with uh, piano black and even carbon fiber. The seats on the very early cars are a little bit anemic and can be a bit fragile. The 2001 model year upgraded the seats with much thicker bolsters. And this is a 2003 model year car where two-tone leather option was available. This has got the charcoal and cranberry split leather interior and actually works really well. Most models came with three auxiliary gauges in the center console, but many also had the extra cost option of the sat nav, which deleted the three auxiliary gauges. But it's a really distinctive dashboard, really works well. It's a little bit lacking in storage space, largely because it's inherited the packaging from the XJS that it replaced. But uh, overall, it's pretty decent. Check the digital display pack here, which carries the clock that can sometimes fail. And check that the air conditioning works. Blocked heater matrices known to be a problem. And check for things like damp carpets, that sort of sub frame issue that we talked about earlier where it can uh, store a lot of rot there if that can lead to a bit of water ingress into the cabin. The handbrake is one of those sort of floor position ones, not a ratchet one. It won't stay up when engaged. Do check that that all works properly because you don't want to be driving off and leaving the rear brakes. Particularly with a low battery, you'll find sometimes electrical gremlins will creep in. You'll get warning lights up sometimes for no reason at all. And one of the other telltale signs of a low battery is that the electric windows either will stop working or crucially when you go to open the door, the window is meant to drop and if it doesn't drop or doesn't return to the closed position then that's usually a sign of some electrical issue more often than not just a low battery and from the 2001 model year they had what's called adaptive restraint technology system or arts for short and basically it was a very clever system which monitored whether you had a passenger and if there wasn't a passenger there it would deactivate the passenger airbag cheaper to repair in the event of an accident you can tell the arts is fitted because there's a little sensor here in the fascia which will light up if someone's a bit too close to that because again it will deactivate the airbag but yeah very nice place to be and a, a very luxurious place to be okay so which model to buy and how much to pay that's the big question of course well in truth prices are all over the place for xk8s you can still buy tatty examples for as little as three thousand pounds but we'd probably avoid doing that and equally run out xkr convertible editions are as much as thirty thousand pounds these days for sort of sensible money between ten and twenty thousand pounds is really sort of your ballpark and obviously coupes are more affordable than convertibles and you could do a lot worse than just aim for a post 2003 car with the later 4.2 liter but if you really want to go for the collectible status try and aim for an xkr 100 if you can they're super collectible they only made 500 and be Beware of fakes, there are many cars advertised for sale claiming to be XKR 100s and they're most certainly not, but any late 2003 and onwards XK is well worth your money. Buy right for the best budget you've got available and keep on top of that maintenance and you won't go wrong. There's phenomenal club support and fantastic independent parts and service specialists around, so you won't struggle keeping your car in tip top condition. But buy right and you won't regret it. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.